Hello everyone, welcome. Today we're looking at uh, further examples on a series parallel connections of a network. And in this example, it reads clearly for the series parallel arrangement shown below, you are supposed to find the supply current, the current flowing through each resistor, and then finally the PD across each resistor. In a series parallel connection, you must be having some few concepts. In series, current is the same, and in parallel, voltage is the same. So that is the basic concept that we'll be using throughout in this particular examples that we are going to do. So basically, when you are given such a circuit, you have to reduce it into a series circuit. Whenever you are given a series parallel connection, or even if it is a parallel connection, always reduce it to a series connection. So basically, I'm looking at the parallel connection. I need to reduce it. I need to compress this. I need to get the equivalent circuit. So what I do is, but for my solution, for my solution, what I will do, I will compress these two. Remember, the two resistors are connected in parallel. So what I will do, I will use the product sum method. Product sum method. I will say the combined resistance of the two resistors in parallel to be Rx which will be equal to product sum. That is R2 multiplied by R3 divided by R2 plus R3. That is what I'm calling product sum method. So this will be the same as 6 times 2 divided by 6 plus 2. This is the same as 12 over uh, 12 over Uh, 12 over 8 that is the value and once you divide that once you divide that you will be able to get 1.5 you will be able to get 1.5 ohms so 1.5 ohms is the resistance for the two resistors connected in series so basically we can redraw the circuit and visualize the kind of circuit we are making so if you come to this other side now we have combined these resistors we have three resistors like this. So we are now remaining with three resistors. Remember, we have said R1. R1 is equal to 2.5. We have now said this part has been reduced into one resistor. This is Rx, which is equal to 1.5. And this other resistor, R, R4, which is equal to 4 ohms. <clears throat> so basically what I'm saying is we have reduced everything into a series, into a series circuit. We are having the current flowing there. Now we have to use the concept of uh, combining resistors in series. How do we find resistors connected in series, the equivalent circuit? The total resistance for resistors connected in series will be the sum of all the resistors connected in that circuit, which will be equal to 2.5 plus 1.5 plus 4. So that is the total resistance will be equal to, if you sum up the, the three, if you sum up the three resistors, um, you will be able to get eight. You will be able to get eight ohms as the total resistance. 8 as the total resistance. Once you get that, remember the question is part A, find the supply current. So the supply current A, the supply current I will be equal to total voltage divided by the total resistance, RT. So I will be equal to, the total voltage is 200, Total resistance is 8. If you divide 200 divided by 8, if you divide 200 divided by 8, you will get 25 amperes. 25 amperes. So the supply voltage is 25 amperes. So we have answered our first part. We can now look at the second part, which is B. The current flowing in each, flowing through each resistor. We have clearly mentioned that in a series circuit, current is the same. And now we have clearly indicated that uh, the current flowing here is uh, 25 amperes. 25 amperes, that is the current that is flowing there. 
25 amperes is the current flowing in this circuit, then it means this resistor R1 will experience 25 amperes. This resistor R4 will also experience the same 25 amperes. But these two resistors will share the current. Will share the current depending on the resistance. Remember, resistance is the opposition to the flow of current, meaning an area which has got more resistance will take less current. An area which has got less resistance or less opposition will take more current. And that is what we have done in our previous videos, that if you want to get the current flowing in this resistor, you use the neighboring resistor. You use the neighboring resistor. So we are saying, if you want to get the current, let us say this is I3, let us say this is I3, and this I1, uh, sorry, I2. So if you want to get I2, will be the same as if you want to get I2, you use this resistor. If you want to get I3, you will use this resistor. So we want to get I2, you will use this resistor over the total. So we will use 2 divided by 2 plus 6. So I have used this resistor again is the total, which will be times the total current, which is 25. Remember this one will give you, uh, that is 2 over 8, that is 2 over 8, and then you will be able to get 6.25. You'll be able to get 6.25 amperes as the current that is flowing there. We move to I3. If you want to get I3, this one, you'll use this neighboring resistor, which is a 6. All over 6 plus 2, multiplied by the total current, which is 25. If you multiply that, it should give you, it should give you 18.75. 18.75 amperes as the current that is flowing in this resistor. Remember we have said the current I1, current I1 is equal to current I4, which is equal to 25 amperes. I think that is where we started because this resistor and this resistor are connected in series. These other two are the ones which have been connected in the parallel. In a series connection, current is the same. That is why I've said I1 will be 25, I4 will be uh, 25 as well. So those are the current that will be flowing through each resistor. We move to the final bit, the PD across each resistor. Remember, if you have gotten the current, it will be easier for you to get the voltage drops. So what we will do, we will now look for the voltages, the voltages across each resistor. PD drop means the voltage, so what we will do, we know the current here, so the voltage, let us call it voltage V1. The voltage drop across resistor 1 to be given as V1, we know according to Ohm's law, voltage is given by current times resistance. This will be equal to the current flowing there is 25 multiplied by the resistor there, which is 2.5. This should give us, that should give us, if you multiply the 2, if you multiply 25 by 2.5, you'll be able to get 62.25, 62.5 volts. That is the voltage that you'll get across that particular point. Uh, we move to the next one. The voltage drop across, so the voltage drop across the resistor 2. We can call it V2. Voltage V2 will be equal to I2 divided by R2. The voltage, the current 2, current I2, is given as uh, from this particular end, 6.25, 6.25 times, what is the resistance there? The resistance is 6. That should give us, if you multiply that, uh, it should give us a value, should give us a value. Then, you go to V3, V3, V3 will be given by I3 multiplied by R3, which will be equal to, remember our I3 is uh, 18.75 multiplied by, multiplied by the resistor there, which is 2. If you multiply by 2, you will get 0. This 14.5, 
point, if you multiply by this, you will get 16, 7. Then if you multiply by this, uh, you will get uh, 3. <coughs> so the answer becomes that 7.5 volts as the answer. Then, I remember V, we can now look at uh, the voltage across this resistor which is V4. The voltage across that will be equal to 25, 25, sorry, it will be I4 multiplied by R4, which will be equal to the current flowing across this resistor is 25 multiplied by 4. This should give us, that should give us uh, 100 volts. That should give us 100 volts as the voltage that is flowing across that particular point. Remember, remember, if you have gotten voltage, we can do this. This one times this, you'll get 30. 6 times 5 is 30. This is 12, you will get 5. Point. Remember that is 15. This is 36, plus that one you will get 37.5. I want you to be very careful with the answers we are getting here. Voltage V2 and V3 from what we have, from what we have gotten is the same. The reason is very simple, because these are parallel connection, the voltage is the same. The characteristic of a parallel connection is voltage is always the same, and it's clearly shown that uh, the voltages are actually the same. Uh, we now move to the next example, the final example. We now move uh, to the final example. Uh, for the circuit arrangement, this was a neck, pro a neck, a neck uh, question that was done by neck students doing diploma. For the arrangement, find the voltage drop across the two ohm resistor at the source of EMF, the current IX. So we have been given this circuit and we have been asked to find the voltage drop across this and we also determine the current IX. What do we do? Like I said, if you are given such a big circuit, you need to simplify this circuit. And the best, the best way to go about it is by reducing it, is by reducing it. Huh? So basically, I want to combine these two resistors. These two resistors. And remember, whenever you are given a circuit, reduction begins the far end, from the far end of the voltage. If voltage is on this side, combination, reduction of the circuit begins on the opposite side. So we shall start from here and not from this point. So we will combine the two and I will withdraw the circuit. So the solution will be, I will combine these two resistors like that. resistors will be like that. So what I've done, this remains to be 2 ohms. This is uh, 1.4 ohms, 9 ohms. Remember now, this is 17 volts. Remember what I'm doing is, um, oh, I want to combine these two. How do I combine these two? They are connected in parallel. I use product sum method. So this one will become 2 times 8 all over 2 plus 8. That is how you combine two resistors connected in parallel. You take their product divided by their sum. So basically this will reduce to, that is uh, 16 over 10. Of course, that one gives us 1.6 ohms. That is the resistance. Number two, you can see this resistor and this resistor are in series. Huh? 
the two resistors and series, we're going to sum up the two. So we'll draw another circuit like this. <coughs> Another circuit will be looking like that. This is still 17 volts. We have our two ohms. We have our nine ohm there. Remember, I want to reduce these. Huh? So this one, remember I said there, this is the same as 1.6 ohms. Huh? So these two resistors are connected in series. So I will sum up the two. This will be the same as 1.4 plus 1.6 to get 3 ohms, huh? which will give us 3 ohms. Remember what I've said is, we are combining the two resistors by summing the two because they are in series. After reducing this circuit to this level, we are still having the two resistors connected in parallel. How do we reduce resistors connected in parallel? We compress them by product sum method. So we can reduce the circuit further and we draw this this is 2 ohms so this will be 9 times 3 all over 9 plus 3 this will be the same as 27 all over 12 ohms Remember now, we have compressed the circuit into a series circuit. Huh? This circuit is now series, that is a series connection, as you can see it. And if you divide this, if you do your calculation, this becomes 2.25. That is uh, 2.25 ohms as the resistance for this. The two resistors can further be simplified. Huh? We can further simplify that circuit. We can reduce it to this point. We draw this resistor there, like that. And then we have this. So that now we can have, this is the same as 2 plus 2.25, 2.25. So that we now have 4.25 ohms huh? and this is 17 volts so basically what we have been doing is reducing the circuits in that format we have reduced that circuit the total current flowing from the source will be given by i so if you want to get the current if you want to get now the current the current will be given by the total voltage divided by the by the current so the current will be equal to the total voltage divided by the total resistance. Remember what we have gotten here, it means that the total resistance is equal to 4.25. That is the total resistance. So then this will be the same as the total voltage is 17 divided by 4.25, which will be equal to, if you divide 17 divided by 4.25, you will get 4 amperes. 4 amperes. So therefore, the supply current is equal to 4 amperes. That is the total uh, current that is flowing from the source. But what was the question? The voltage drop across the two ohm resistor. We have a number of steps that uh, we want to undertake. If you want to get the voltage drop across the two ohm resistor, uh, it will be very simple because you will take this procedure for you to reach there, the current, the voltage. First of all, you need to get the current that is flowing across this point. So what are we going to do up to that particular point? We know we know that we can be able to get I1. We can be able to get I1 by using uh, the parallel a circuit connection theorem whereby we will take uh, we will use this circuit we will use this circuit and we know I1 
I1 is the current that is flowing through this point. Remember, we have compressed this section. Huh? So the current I1 is the current that is flowing through this section. So we will use these two. We will use these two. And remember, we have said the current I1, the current I1, remember what I'm going to use is this circuit. So I will redraw it so that it is clear to everyone. This is two ohms. I will use this is my nine. And I will also use this three. These three ohms like that. I've said the total current flowing is four amperes. Huh? This current is going to approach this junction. So these four amperes will be flowing until this point. So still, this is four amperes. Huh? But we have said I1 is the current that is flowing after the branch nine. Huh? So how do you get that? You're going to use current divider rule. Using current divider rule, it means that uh, if you want to get the current passing through this resistor, you use this current. So you want to get the current using this branch, you use this resistor. So it means I1 will be given by, we will use this, we will use this uh, nine, all over nine plus three. Because we want to get the current here, use this resistor. This will be equal to nine all over 12. That is three, 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 four. Remember, I1 is the same as 0 0.75 amperes. That is the current I1. That is the current I1. But you need to multiply, you need to multiply this by, you need to multiply this by the total current. You need to multiply this by the total current so that now you get 3 over 4 times 4, which is equal to 3 amperes. Huh? So the current I1 is actually 3 amperes. We move still further. If you have gotten your I1, if you have gotten your I1 as a, as a 3 amperes, then it means the current reaching this branch is 3 amperes. Huh? And we have said according to current divider rule, current will divide. What we are interested in is the current passing through this branch. So you use this resistor. You will use that resistor. So what will happen is you will get the current I, the current passing through the two ohm resistor will be equal to, you use the other ohm resistor which is eight divided by two plus eight times three. This will be equal to, remember this is 10, that is 24. This current becomes 2.4 amperes. So the current flowing across the, that particular point is 2.4 ohms. Huh? So if you want to get the, the voltage drop across this particular resistor, you will use, uh, you will say the voltage drop is equal to I multiplied by R. This will be equal to 2.4 times, 2.4 times, uh, the resistance which is 2, so the voltage drop across that particular point is 4.8. Remember, what we have gotten is the voltage drop across this particular point. In our notes, we have only done the voltage drop across this point where we said V is equal to IR. Remember the current initially was 4 times 2 which is equal to 8 volts. Huh? So I decided to do the voltage drop across this first two ohm resistor and we have also gotten the voltage drop across these other two ohm resistor. So that is the process that you undertake. We will now do the very final bit. You are getting the current Ix. Remember we have gotten the current uh, I1. If you want to get the current Ix, current Ix will be equal to the current Ix is flowing through the 8 ohm resistor, so we shall use 2 ohm resistor. So that you have 2 all over 2 plus 8 multiplied by 3. This will be equal to 2 over 10 multiplied by 3, which is 0 0.6 amperes. So the current flowing across the Ix is equal to 0 0.6 amperes. And that, is, that brings us to the end of this particular session.